San Francisco, the most woke city in the world, may be ending the woke era and turning conservative. Now, San Francisco, a lot of times, is the bellwether for as-goes liberal policies. So the progressive city is surprising itself with support of two new propositions and death to woke policies. And this is confounding because we suspect, we expect San Francisco to do everything except represent the people of San Francisco. So here's a short list of San Francisco's maybe move to the middle. We're going to go over them in detail. Now, first of all, they're supporting two law and order ballot measures, Prop E and F. Also, the new Giants coach is requiring the team to stand for the national anthem before every game if they want to play full stop. What? Uh, also, a school district in the East Bay Area has ended its contract with an organization called Woke Kindergarten, which was actually a thing. This is going to blow your mind. Watch. Let's start there. The Hayward School District, which is where my parents are from, Hayward, had spent $250,000 to hire a group called Woke Kindergarten. <laughs> this is real. It's a, gro uh, a group. A group. Uh, a group by this non-binary person, uh, an abolitionist early educator. That's not a thing. Cultural organizer and creator currently innovating ways to resist, heal, liberate, and create with their pedagogy, woke kindergarten. So you got you to gotta take them from their mamas and ideologically indoctrinate them is what this, late, uh, this person purple -haired, is This purple-haired person. Uh, one teacher reported that the program was problematic was he a racist conservative no he was a liberal gay man he was fired after he raised these concerns he said that while he supports discussing racism in the classroom he was told the primary objective of the program was to disrupt whiteness in the school and that the sessions were not a place to express white guilt he said he questioned a trainer who was using the phrasing so-called united states as well as lessons available on the organization's website offering Lil Comrade combos or positing a world without police, money, or landlords. This is that video, which still lives on Instagram. When I think about a world free of state violence, free of war, free of genocide, I think about a world free of the U.S. empire. I think about a world free of Israel. I think about a world free of every occupier that's ever existed. I think about land back to indigenous peoples globally. I think about the fact that we would not have to participate in these systems because none of these systems would exist. That means kids wouldn't have to go to school because the world would ultimately be their classroom. They would learn with us. They would learn from us. We would learn from them. We would create these ecosystems of community care that would make sure that everybody had what they needed so nobody would want for anything. We would hear music everywhere. We would make art out of everything. We'd be able to write so much more poetry because we would have so much joy in ourselves that we would need some place to move it, some place for it to land. The people would have the power and the kids would have more too. Okay, see that internet router you have behind you? You wouldn't have that in this new world uh, or the TV behind you or most of the things you're wearing that presumably come from Target or Amazon. But cool, you'd be able to write more poetry. Uh, cool, dude. Now, is that too much for kindergartners, though? Do you think that maybe they'd wonder, if you want this world, why'd you come to our school? Because we have to be in school. Um, after this, the school district ended their woke kindergarten contract, but not after this guy was fired. Unfortunately, he was put on leave, and then there was a backlash for it. You fired a gay man uh, for saying that this kindergarten is not the place for this. And then they ended the contract. So what's amazing is that they had it in the first place. Uh, is that one woke policy to die on the vine? Let me know what you think. The second is that the San Francisco Giants will now be required to stand for the national anthem before games. Here's what the new team manager has to say about it. He says it has nothing to do with politics. This is Bob Melvin, new coach of the Giants. He says, look, we're a team here. We got some good players here. It's more about letting the other side know that we're ready to play. I want guys out here ready to go. There's a personality to that. Has nothing to do with whatever happened in the past or whatever. It's just something I embrace. So you stand there or you don't play. I, lo I just love it. Yeah. I mean, quite a turn from a few years ago when in San Francisco is, of course, celebrating kneeling. Yeah. You know, and defunding the police, right? Right. How'd that go for you?
San Francisco, <laughs> right. you know, doing you, what Colin Kaepernick wanted. The only time you clean up your city is when Xi Jinping arrives from China and you kick all the all the homeless people out and you clean up all the poop. There's literally a website. Or you're an immigrant. Or, or you're an immigrant. David, weren't you telling us there's a website devoted to poop tracker in San Francisco? Oh, yeah, there is. Like where human, has, human beings have pooped on the streets so you can avoid that on your and app? And basically... The whole city was brown. I mean, if you saw the map, it was just like Disgusting. all brown. Yeah. Can you imagine, by the way, hilarious. Yes, that I that's... can. I lived in the Tenderloin. I swear one day when I was going to work, I stepped over an abortion. It's gnarly oh on the streets God. there. Oh, my God. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I went through the, the Tenderloin, and it's it's not any better. That's actually where they're, like, handing out paraphernalia and drugs to people. Like, yeah. here, this is I how you fix there. the problem. Just give them what they want. Steve Jobs announced the iPhone there in san francisco little did he know not that, in the tenderloin no no in san francisco yeah just get the point it, it, little did he know that like years later they would be using an iphone with an app devoted for poop tracking in the city right like, yeah. like he would have <laughs> right good thing he passed away he's like i never wanted to see that happen to my you know right well the fact that the the giants can now say this is not a political move was not a luxury afforded to the San Francisco 49ers. They couldn't say, we don't want this to be political. It's just what we do. They were piled on for just saying that. Uh, so again, is this woke policy number two to die on the vine? Asking you what you think. And finally, the two policies up for a vote just tomorrow, Proposition, Proposition E and F. Pro Proposition E would expand police surveillance tools and allow police to use force without requiring written reports for every altercation. So here's a brief summary of it. Uh, it says that police officers much, must not spend more than 20% of their job on administrative tasks because what was happening was if you even got so much as into a like push fight with somebody used any kind of force it was paperwork 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 all kinds of reports well now they say you cannot be doing that you have to actually be out there enforcing the law and if you uh have any kind of use of force event you don't have to file a report unless there's a physical injury or a firearm was removed from an officer's holster so you also can use body camera footage now which hadn't you know had been on the chopping block uh use of drones so it's like yeah, police the streets, right? They are actually for it. Uh, here's a summary of Prop F, which would require people to receive welfare money only if they test for drugs. And if they fail the drug test, then they have to go into treatment programs in order to continue receiving them. Well, that's funny because in San Francisco, you know, Michael Schellenberger in his great book, San Francisco, which I'm going to talk about later, he talked to someone who was like, hey, you know, someone who was involved actively in the homeless industrial complex. And he was like, look at all these people. They're dying. They're naked. They're cold. San Francisco's cold. What's going on? Should we maybe help them not take drugs? And this person was like, th literally, this is a quote, no, body autonomy. That's what they should do. But whatever you want to do with your body, you have autonomy, right? And so this proposition is saying, no, we're not for body autonomy. We don't want to use our taxpayer dollars to give people to take more drugs. Both of these are supported by San Francisco Mayor London Breed. She's a Democrat, but they call her a moderate. And both are expected to pass a recent poll by the Chronicle, uh, uh, by the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce, sorry, found that 61% of likely voters support the two ballot measures. And 72% of them believe San Francisco is on the wrong track. That's because most people in the city in California proper are not actually crazy. I come from California. I'm crazy, but not like that, right? I right. don't want people to it's die. It's a spectrum. spectrum. It's a spectrum, right? right. Yeah, a, most a, of them are quite moderate and reasonable. Uh, one resident said this to the Wall Street Journal, the pendulum is swinging. It's coming hardcore back to the center. Uh, maybe because residents are just tired of it. Last year, San Francisco had a record 806 overdose, overdose deaths. And again, as Michael Schellenberger points out in his book, when you enable drug users, they die faster. Uh, look at this quote. He says, people are not dying from drug overdose deaths in San Francisco because they're being arrested. They're dying because they aren't being arrested. Decriminalization reduces prices by lowering production and distribution costs, 
which increases use. This was also the case for alcohol consumption. It increased after prohibition ended in the United States. Uh, and he gives the case study of Portugal, which is interesting, but we're not going to get derailed there. So uh, again, I just want to say most people and voters are very moderate when it comes to these things, but there's been such institutional capture from very loud liberal institutions that you just wouldn't know it. So is this overall a pendulum shift uh, or are these things one-offs? Let me know what you think and I guess we'll see tomorrow oh. after the votes. Wow. And I and I think too, like if you look at the like look at Portland, Oregon, look at these big cities, it's like you have a small percent of people that are the progressives or whatever. But like if you get out in the rural areas and a and a, a big chunk of the city itself, most people are liberal. They're 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 more like classic liberals. So I think it's like it's it's kind of like it's not um, conducive to to everybody that's in that area because it's like these cities have a concentration of the progressives or the woke people. And so it makes it seem like those areas are, but those are also the bigger um, uh, voting areas, you know, like where, like they control the votes of a lot of things. Yeah. So I think that that, because the rural people are like around here, you get outside of the big cities, everybody's basically conservative. Mm. Yeah, that does set, tend to follow the trend. And a lot of people who are liberal, who live in cities, are worried about less like working class type situations. You know, they want to spout their ideology without much life experience. That's usually the case. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.